I think real life role playing, you've got the ability to let your altered ego out if you like. A lot of people have a lot of stress, a lot of tension in their real lives and with real life role playing they've got a, a very constructive release valve. A lot of people may find in their job that they are the underdog always ordered about and yet they can come down here and they can be uh, a captain of a guard with 50 men under them and they can really, if you like, pronounce themselves out to be the true selves. The gathering itself is our major event of the year. It's where all the clubs from around the country is actually combined to come down to a, a long weekend. And we provide a large plot area and we split these people up into their various factions and that. Um, we have 50 or 60 of the real life role playing traders um, come down. That's what basically where people mainly buy their equipment and weapons for the year. We provide entertainment, um, competitions and things. Uh, and, and generally, whereas each club is very much an individual item, at the gathering all the clubs work together and this all culminates on the, the Bank Holiday Monday with a, a mass battle with two to three thousand people. Hey, right about now we're getting ready to have a uh, competition with all the champions from the different groups of the Wolves to uh, see which uh, champion gets to carry the Hammer of Thor for the next year. Should be quite an interesting event. And how many champions are there? Um, there's one champion for each group. I'm the champion for the Black Wolves of Maliki. Um, I'm not exactly sure how many champions there are, but we do have quite a few. What's your chosen weapon? My chosen weapon is a two-handed sword. But since I had a slight injury, um, I'm using the one-handed sword at this time. The meat cleavers are sort of generally orcish. So I suppose anyone along the lines of orc or something similar would would chop somebody up with that. Peasantish, peasant, squeaky, goblin, that sort of thing. Rough and ready, obviously a soft metal because he's well chewed up. Wooden handle because he can't afford anything fancy. There's a weapon for a peasant. What's your chosen weapon? This is my chosen weapon. It keeps it in my pouch, sir. It's not just for show. Where? What do you mean, where? What? That's, that's the smallest cod piece I've ever seen in my life. You're just asking for trouble, sir. The cheek of the man, he wants an interview, and he goes and sold my package. We're, we're mortals, but we have the goddess inside us. So as long as the goddess stays with us, we live. Right. And is it, is it, uh, is it quite good fun being all-powerful? Well, it can be. I <laughs> like killing people. <laughs> they upset me. <laughs> We ain't got no wife. We got floozies. We get tied down to one woman. We got five this evening. They, they come on ship with you, do they? No, I have them where they stand. We have to stand in a chair, though. Ready? I am married. My husband went away two years ago and has just returned. To find you um, with child? With child. He's delighted. It's an air. He's air claiming air. it. Hit. He's it's claiming his. it's his and he's delighted. It's I'm not very happy about it myself. I don't want it to interfere with my fighting and um, merrymaking. <laughs> right. He's got it. But you can, you can just um, palm it off to somebody else once it's born. It would be fostered. I don't think palming off is quite the expression. <laughs> it would be fostered by um, a worthy mother and father. Yes. What, what would you consider worthy? What are the qualities you're looking for? Violent? Violent. Strong, loud voice. Um, drinks <laughs> like a fish. Drinks like a fish. You can't start drinking them Oregon, they're not getting the job. And more than prepared to throw their weight around whenever necessary. So somebody with a lot of weight then? A lot of... Weight. That's perfect. Oh, I guess so. I, th I think a daughter too. I think I'd very much like for it to be a daughter, to follow my footsteps. Mm. Oh, that'd be no bloody good. The best thing about live role playing is that you don't get all the bleep that you get with real life. You're petting yourself against the odds. But if you're putting yourself without all the hassle that you have in real life, it's just you and your sword against against the enemy. That's the best thing about it. Right. What, what do you do in real life then? Uh, I'm an electronic engineer. Right. I make mobile phones. Right. This is so. This is a lot of disposable income at these things. It's people buy incredibly expensive weapons. Is that? Um, live role players as a whole, mainly students and things like that. 
but they save up all the money to come to the gathering and that's when they spend their money you know the scrimp and save of the year just to, just to be able to buy a nice weapon buy a nice shield buy some nice costume they take pride in their weapons and costumes you see they want to look good <laughs> of the tribe. I dance and I fight for the tribe when we have to. We are nomadic roamers of the plains. We hunt bison, follow the herds wherever they go. In real life, I'm a computer programmer. What's the attraction of life role playing for you? It's a chance to get away and be me, isn't it? So you... What would you, what would you wear normally? Jeans and t-shirt, or at work, a shirt and tie. I don't like them. I, I like not having any trousers on. I like to run around and be a loon. I like not having to get up on time. I like not having to follow rules and orders. So what was the battle plan? The battle We're plan was for um, the dragon faction to come out from behind our shield wall and smash through their shield wall and split them up and then we'd come around to flames and everybody else awesome. get on flames. And it worked an absolute dream. It was brilliant. They had no chance right from when the dragons broke through, it's great. Right. So, um, I actually didn't manage to gather who won in that. Presumably you did. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We were, we were skirmishing the bottom of the hill. We looked up and we heard a scream. And all we could see was this mass of pole arms going straight through the yeah, middle of their line. And, and it was beautiful. Stories. It was so beautiful to watch. It was great. Yeah, we're skirmishers. <laughs> Well, wherever yeah, there's a yeah. hole, we'll plug it, and if the hole's in their line, we'll fill it with us. It's as simple as that. And if you see, if you see at one point, there was an open-sided square at the back of their lines, and a bunch of us and a bunch of Ank elves from the Unicorn faction just nipped in through the middle, wandered on quite sort of like, saw their hole and went for it. And then that hollow square just collapsed into a heap in the middle, and the big lads just pressed them in. Every now and again, the referees would call back, and the bodies would go out, and the line would get smaller, and the hole would get bigger, and all of a sudden there was this little knot of about eight of them. And we looked at them and said, do you surrender? And they said, no, we'll die. And so they did. It was absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> Somebody again? Yeah. You hit somebody again? Yes, again, twice. I think I might have killed him as well. Yeah? Did you kill anyone? No, it's all got a bit confused, I'm afraid. I, mean, I think I've only just tried to kill him. I went confusion and then I stabbed him. Alright, just a bit, of a, bit of a sneaky one. I feel really bad about it, you know. Why I've is that? I've got a bad conscience now because, um, well, I'm actually in the of Kinor, I'm like Queen of the Sheet and Really, this was something, as you say, it was a bit sneaky, maybe. Um. It's about escapism. People getting out of themselves, and doing what they like, saying what they like, and behaving exactly the way they would like to behave, given a certain set of circumstances. Yeah. And it provides the atmosphere that you can do that in. Did you kill anyone this afternoon?